Hello everyone, Amber Temerity here, owner of ThriftyGuardian.com, and real quick today, I just wanted to do a short little video about how I generate some of my profits through Pinterest via affiliate marketing. Now, I make about $1,200 a month with affiliate marketing, and that number has continued to grow since I've made the shift to focus a little bit more on it. It's still not my number one income stream, um, it's actually third, but but it's still a big part of what I do. So I want to share a little bit of that with you today. Basically, affiliate marketing on Pinterest back in like the middle of 2015 through early 2016, affiliate marketing did not exist on Pinterest. They had banned it completely because of how spammy things had gotten. People weren't following the laws that are in place for affiliate marketing. Um, things are just not going well. And those that were doing things right, that were making money through Pinterest, but also following the guidelines, following the law, they really um, had to take a step back. They really had to reevaluate how they were doing things. And so you saw a slight shift in how affiliate marketing was being done. Um, it wasn't quite as direct as it had been, especially when it came to Pinterest, obviously. Now that has changed, now you can post affiliate links on Pinterest, provided that the platform, the affiliate platform that you are using allows it. Now I will say Amazon, for example, does not allow affiliate links on Pinterest. There's a number of things in their terms of service, their TOS, that says basically, nah, -uh, not on Pinterest. It's not clear that people are clicking through an affiliate link that um, disclosure oftentimes gets buried there. They're just not happy with that, right? You can share via Facebook, you can share on a Twitter, Pinterest, Amazon thus far has said nope. So how do you get around that? Well, regardless of what platform you're using, one of the main things that you should be doing is writing blog posts that you can then plug affiliate links into. And not just that, but ideally you already have blog posts in place that you can put affiliate links in, right? So for Thrifty Guardian, which as many of you know is a frugal living site for parents, I already, before I even thought about affiliate marketing, one of my very first blog posts was about 10 overrated baby items, right? Those things that new parents are always thinking, oh, I need a wipe warmer, I need a thousand burp rags, I need X, Y, and Z if I'm ever, if they're gonna let me bring the baby home from the hospital. Well, for me, you know, especially after having my second kid, it became real clear that some of those things way overrated. And so I wrote a post about what I did instead. You know, instead of a changing table, which could have cost me anywhere from like $200 to $500, nah, -uh, I secured a changing pad to the top of my dresser. Done. Easy. No more money spent. So like I said, this was a blog post that I'd already written out, already recommending a few products here and there. So when I decided to dive into affiliate marketing, it was really easy for me to go back through those posts and link those products. Again, whether it's Amazon or ShareASale is another affiliate platform that I'm really into. Find the links, go there. Um, if you're not sure if a product or service that you're already raving about has an affiliate program, seriously, go into Google and Google the name of the product or service plus affiliate. Chances are good if they have an affiliate program, it's gonna show up right there at the top of the results. That's how I found like 90% of the affiliate programs that I work with. So, and then also I wanna talk about, again, bringing it back to Pinterest, how you can go about if you don't necessarily have blog posts, you're not really a blogger, um, you don't think that'll really work out well. Well, one thing you should have on your website is a resources page a listing of about 10 products or services that your target market really needs in their lives. It doesn't need to be really in-depth. Again, you can write blog posts on these elsewhere, but just a real quick little rundown of why these top 10 resources are the ones that you recommend for your audience and why they need them. Again, one or two quick sentences for each one. Then you can create an image for each of those um, products or services and create pins for them, right? So that people can sort of get a rundown of what it is that you really recommend, what it is that makes an impact on your life and the way that you're living it. 
I don't always or often recommend that you create pins that lead directly to a product or service, right? Because Pinterest isn't the same as social media. The stuff that's showing up in people's smart feeds, the stuff that's showing up in their search results, they're nine times out of 10 expecting blog posts. So while it can work, and I again, I know people that do this that make thousands a month supposedly, it's it's a lot trickier. So it really is easier if you can have a resource page, if you can have a blog post. But again, if your affiliate platform allows it, if your affiliate platform allows it, check those terms of service, then you can link to a product or service. I just make it really clear in that description that that is what you're linking to and then make sure that the disclosure isn't hidden because one of the big things with affiliate marketing, one of the things that can get you in a lot of trouble, and I see this all the time, is if you don't have that disclosure in place. If you're not sure what I mean, look up the FTC law on it, on affiliate marketing. They'll tell you it's got to be before the link and it's got to be very clear to that reader that what they're reading is something through which if they click that link, you'll earn a commission at no extra cost to them, at no way impacts what it is that you're recommending or referring them to. But you've just got to be clear, right? And why wouldn't you? You want your audience to trust. You want them to know that what it is you are recommending really is something that will make a positive difference in their lives for one reason or another. So that's all I got on that. If you want to learn more about affiliate marketing, I will link to a blog post that I wrote all about it, how to get started with this video. And then if you have not yet done my Pint Essential Planning Workshop, it's free, free training on exactly how to get started. So if you're sitting here listening to me talk about, oh, create a pin for your affiliate posts or create a pin for this or this, and you're like, I don't even know what, how, what? <laughs> if you're sitting there not even sure what a pin should look like, do this training. Again, I will link to it, but it's just bit.ly slash free pin plan, all lowercase, bit.ly slash free pin plan, free pin plan, whoo, little tongue twister, super easy, it'll take you about an hour to work through all of it, um, it's broken down into lessons, so you can do one at a time, or you can pause it, implement, come back, be done in like two hours, and have a superb roadmap laid out for you in terms of generating leads, generating traffic, and eventually, generating profits through Pinterest. Thank you all so much for tuning in and I will talk to you later. Bye.